Good morning. It's Sunday. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let's rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Oh, we serve such an awesome God. Amen. He's amazing. Hallelujah. From the highest of heights to the depths of the sea. Creations revealing your majesty From the colors of fall To the fragrance of spring Every creature unique in the song that it sings All exclaiming Indescribable Uncontainable, you place the stars in the sky and you know them by name. You are amazing, God. All powerful, untamable, all struck, we fall to our knees as we humbly proclaim. You are amazing, God. Good morning. Welcome to Worship in the Word. I pray that you're ready this morning. Ready just to hear from the Lord, hear from God, draw closer to Him, and also to each other. Even though we're doing this virtually, God is everywhere all the time, and He brings His people together no matter what. Amen. From the highest of heights to the depths of the sea. Creations revealing your majesty. From the colors of fall to the fragrance of spring. Every creature unique in the song that it sings All exclaiming, indescribable, uncontainable You place the stars in the sky and you know them by name You are amazing God All powerful Untamable, awestruck we fall On our knees we humbly proclaim You are amazing God Yes, you are Who has told every lightning bolt Where it should go Or seeing heavenly storehouses laden with snow. Who imagined the sun who gives its source of light, yet conceals it to bring us the coolness of night? None can fathom, indescribable. Uncontainable, you place the stars in the sky, you know them by name. You are amazing, God. All powerful, untamable, awestruck, we fall on our knees, we humbly proclaim. You are amazing. Indescribable, uncontainable, 
You place the stars in the sky, you know them by name. You are amazing, God. Incomparable, unchangeable, you see the depths of my heart. You love me the same. Uncontainable, you place the stars in the sky, you know them by name. You are amazing, God. Incomparable, unchangeable, you see the depths of my heart, and you love me the same. You are amazing. See the depths of my heart, and you love me the same. You are amazing, God. Oh, yes, you are. Good morning. It's good to see you. Happy Sunday. Wow, what a Great day to start the morning off with singing, with a song in our hearts, right? And, you know, the world is absolutely wacky. It's crazy, isn't it? In fact, let me just start off this morning by giving you fair warning. Here's the deal. I'm too old to really care anymore what the world thinks about me. Do I want to get along? Absolutely. Do I pray for peace? You know it. But you know what? There is just too much mamby pambiness. There's too much of this crazy talk about, you know, let's try to fit in and get back to normal. Let me tell you guys something. Normal ain't coming back. Normal is, is not on its way home, folks. Normal is not coming your direction. But guess what? Jesus is coming back. Normal is not coming back, but Jesus is definitely coming back. So we have to know where we stand and who we stand with and what we stand for. And you know, if you're worried about, you know, your worldly reputation or what other people might think, and you're willing to compromise the truth, whoo, look out, that's some dangerous territory. Just go through this week saying to yourself, normal isn't coming back, but Jesus is. Am I ready? That's the question. That's the question. So if I seem a little bit fired up this morning, um, you know, it's kind of like I listen to these different messages and what people are saying and the noise is just getting louder and louder and there's so much compromise and, and subterfuge and things going on in this world that are just absolutely designed to take you and your faith down, okay? My prayer this morning is simply this. Uh, you don't really give a rip about what I have to say. I pray that you care absolutely, unequivocally enough about the word of God to dig in and do it his way. I don't want you to do it my way. So you're going to probably hear some of me in this. You're probably going to hear some stuff. You're going to go, oh, man, is this guy off his rocker? What's going on? He's going to get in trouble. He's going to get us in trouble, whatever. You know, it's like my buddy Jack Nicholson says, and maybe some of you have seen this. I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to tone it down a little bit. But what he says is the people that care are over there. What I'm saying is, is that you can't worry about what people are thinking. You gotta be solid on making your decisions based on the plumb line of God's word. And you gather uh, your, yourself together with uh, wise counsel, other believers who have the mind and the heart of Christ. And you hunker down and you pray. So, so the fair warning is that I am not holding anything back 
Uh, yesterday is gone. Tomorrow's not guaranteed. All I've got's this morning. All I've got's today. And so I want to share with you this morning about bullying because we have a lot of that going on in the world. And you're thinking, well, you know, it causes fights. People get in trouble. People get hurt. What's up with the bully? We're afraid of the bully. Is anybody going to take the bully out? What's, what's going on? So I'm going to give you a couple of uh, things to chew on this week that are going to be totally based on God's word. So we're going to be looking at a lot of little passages of what God's word has to say about bullies and bullying. And we're going to apply it right now to today. We're going to apply it like right here in our world and what you and I are facing this very moment. You know, this isn't going to let up. Remember, normal ain't coming back. Jesus is. That's a guarantee. So let's take a look at this morning and see what uh, what the word of God has to say about bullying. Why are we even talking about this? Well, I'm just going to say it up front. I'll just tell you, the world is getting bullied into this wokeness and this crazy, bizarre, uh, uh, massive amount of precepts that are so fervently trying to uh, encourage you and me to uh, totally cave in, give in, to all these ridiculous movements and mandates and all this stuff that is totally headed towards a one world government, towards a one world system that will usher in the end of the age. Not that we aren't in that now, because when Jesus rose from the tomb, that's the, that's the end of the age. Okay, so we're waiting, right, for the return of Christ but you see, God works through time and space. He works through history. That's how he, he wove himself into time and space. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, Jesus Christ. And whoever puts their hope and their trust in his ministry, his life, his death, his burial, and his resurrection shall not perish but have life everlasting. That's the simple gospel message. That's what you and I are here for to share the truth of the gospel with a lost and dying world. So this morning, we're going to dive right into the truth of how this world is attempting to bully you and I into submission. And it's tragic what's going on on the world stage right now. We can see this being played out right between you know Russia and Ukraine right now. And we see it happening on our borders we're getting bullied into submission and we're getting uh, watered down and, and we're, we're expected to think that, you know, there, there's no way out and, and this new world order is somehow a good thing. Let me just ask you this question, all right? It, it, do you see anything being built back better? It, I'm, in other words, our, uh, you know, let's just say a couple of years ago, look at your life. Two, three years ago, four years ago, how was your life? Are things better now? If you're paying six, seven, eight, nine, ten bucks a gallon of gas, have you noticed that your bread costs more? Have you noticed that people just simply standing in a bread line in Ukraine are getting mowed down by soldiers, innocent women, children? If that isn't bullying, if that isn't taking advantage of the weak, the poor, the innocent, the widow, the orphan, I don't know what is. And if you were here a couple of weeks ago, I shared with you that Scripture says very succinctly that pure religion is taking care of those that can't take care of themselves. So this morning, I'm going to kick this off uh, with a passage uh, right out of 1 John 3.15. simply says this, everyone who hates his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. So when we start to see, um, and I'm going to use some examples of what's going on with Russia and Ukraine. I'm going to make, use some examples of what's happening right here in our own country. And most importantly, I'm going to give you some examples of some biblical folks who, who were totally bullied. And what God does in dealing in that situation to reveal himself and to show himself faithful in the lives of his people. And these examples apply to you and me. And I'm going to finish it out this morning with an example of 
that Jesus gives us, and it ought to be uh, some marching orders for every person who ever hears this message to stand firm, and not only that, but to pass along the torch of truth to the next generation, to our kids, to our kids' kids. You want to leave this world all right, free and clean. You want to leave this world clinging to nothing. You want to leave this world leaving a legacy, something that you can, when you enter into God's presence, and you hear those words, well done, good and faithful servant. You don't want to look back and say, well, I clung too tightly to the world. No, let go of it now. Let go of it now. You know what? The whole money system might change. You might lose everything. You might lose your house. You might lose your 401k. You might lose your mind over this, okay? But if you stay standing firm on the rock solid foundation of God, you're gonna be all right. So let's take a look at this bully thing, you know, and, and I'm going to get into some of the psychology. We're going to take a look at what's happening. We're going to, but I want to give you some scriptures just to chew on a little bit. Leviticus 19.18 says, you shall not take vengeance or bear a grudge against the sons of your own people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I'm the Lord. This is God speaking. He's saying this to you, he's saying it to me, he's saying it to Vladimir Putin, he's saying it to every human being on the planet Earth, he's saying it to Joe Biden, and there's this whole woke administration that, that, that you and I are having to contend with, hopefully for just a little while. We'll see what happens. Jesus could return tonight, all right? So don't lose heart, don't lose faith. He's overcome the world. All right, these are exciting times. I know they're unprecedented. It's tough. It's hard. A lot of folks are going through some difficult times, some difficult things. But hang in there. Hang in there, all right, because God's in charge. Deuteronomy 31.6 tells us, be strong and courageous. Don't fear or be in dread of them, for it is the Lord your God who goes with you. He will not leave you or forsake you. Oh, look at that. God's not going to leave you. He's not going to forsake you. No matter what, when that thought starts to come in into your head, it's like, oh man, I don't know what we can do here. I, don't, I can't figure it out. No, you, you can't figure it out. You don't know what's going on. There are so many layers of lies and, and, and deceit and sub-stories and backstories that are, they're generational, folks. Okay, uh, the little folks like you and me, do you think we can, can figure that out? No, we're too hard. We're working too hard to, to take time to do that. But these legacies of lies generationally that have been passed down and, and how it is now affecting the entire world is absolutely and dramatically exciting if you're looking through the lens of God. If you're not, you're gonna live in fear and scarcity. And that's one of the big uh, uh, foundational issues with these bullies that we see in the world right now. But be strong and courageous. Don't fear. Trust God. You see, Proverbs 6, 16 says, there are six things that the Lord hates, seven that are abominations to him, haughty eyes, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked plans, feet that make haste to run to evil, a false witness, who breathes out lies, and one who sows discord among brothers. Are we seeing this now or not? This is all coming to fruition, folks. Uh, I mean, we've just fallen off the cliff. So it's, it's almost like overnight, really. If you look at the past two years, anybody really remember a whole bunch over the past two years? This pressure cooker of fear and scarcity and, and all this stuff that everybody's been living in has worn a lot of people out. People are getting sick all over again simply because they're, they're stressed, they're, they're emotionally drained, they're mentally, physically impacted by this whole thing. And see, God is saying, not just for today or for last year or 100 years ago, but for since the beginning of time, as we know it, his eternal word is true. It says that, that he hates these things. He hates uh, lying. He hates uh, hands that shed innocent blood. Are we seeing that now? Yes, we are. We're seeing hands that are shedding innocent blood. 
And God hates that. He hates a false witness. He hates the lies that are being breathed out. And he hates those who sow discord among brothers. Man, if, if you're tuned in here this morning and this, any of this is resonating with you, I, I wish you'd put an amen or something in there. Are you, are you awake this morning? Are you alive? Are you out there? All right, I, I can see some of your names. I just want to say hello. And you know what? I'm not, I'm not trying to, to preach at you this morning. I'm not even going to ask you to even agree with me because a lot of this stuff that I'm going to be putting out here this morning is simply going to be, here's God's word, deal with it. Here's, here's some comments on that. But you know what? I'm going to be asking questions rather than, than, than making statements. So are you happy with the way things are going? Are, are you tired of getting bullied yourself? Do you even believe that you're getting bullied? Do you see other people getting bullied? And what should we do about it? Listen to this. 1 John 2, 9 says, Whoever says he is in the light and hates his brother is still in darkness. See, when you're seeing people being threatened, bullied, when you see them being abused, even killed, Women and children over in Ukraine right now. We see things going on in our own country. People are going, going crazy. Crime is rampant. Inflation is, is through the roof. All these things are huge stressors. And, you know, if you think that these are brought on by happenstance, uh, you haven't lived enough life. If some of you young people out there, you're thinking, wow, this is normal. No, this ain't normal. Remember, normal ain't coming back, but Jesus is. Matthew 5, 38 through 41 states this very clearly. You have heard that it was said an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, do not resist the one who is evil. But if anyone slaps you on the right cheek, turn to him the other also. Now, this is going to seem a little weird. We're going to explain this out. Okay, so if someone slaps you on the cheek, turn the other also. And if anyone would sue you and take your tunic, let him have your cloak as well. And if anyone forces you to go one mile, go with him two miles. See, here's the deal with this. Scripture, sometimes you think, well, this is so scripture stuff. It's all churchy and it's not making a whole lot of sense to me. What's this all about? Um, and then you hear about Jesus uh, uh, being a pacifist and how you and I as, as Christians, you know, we just, that we, we misinterpret what it really means to be a loving individual. And, and, and oftentimes we sacrifice the truth for some kind of compromise, which is, is the easy way out. See, this scripture doesn't give us an easy way out and just say, okay, someone slaps you, let them slap you again. Just be a doormat. Just keep you know, knocking around here. If they want, to, want you to carry something, a heavy load you know, on, down the road, don't just do it a mile, do two. See, here's the meaning behind that. See, in, in Jesus's day, right? And these are Jesus's words, by the way. If if a a Roman came up and slapped you, all right, all right, because you're a lesser person, uh, they're going to bully you around. There, you're going to be, um, you, you're going to have to do their bidding, etc. Check this out. The law said, okay, you can slap that person, but if you slap them a second time, they have an opportunity to get you back. Oh, oh, Pastor Mike, no, Bible couldn't possibly say that. Uh, you know, all you, you, the Christians are just supposed to be a loving Christian and let everybody walk all over them. Scripture never says that. You stand firm on the solid rock of Jesus Christ. He's the victor. And when you and I understand the meaning of these things, we can apply them in our practical world in ways that actually make sense. See, there's a huge difference between, uh, uh, you know, killing and murder, two different things. And we're not going to get into that this morning, but do you get the gist of this right here? Jesus is saying, look, if you're getting bullied around, you get slapped one time, that's, you just keep walking. Okay, but they slap you again. You have an opportunity legally even, this is the legal opportunity that they had, to defend yourself. <laughs> you know what? I am just so tired of the weakness that we're seeing in this world right now. We're seeing it in, in weak leadership. We're seeing it in, in weak responses. We're just seeing weakness all over the place. And the bullies are taking advantage of it. Um, 
Uh, th this is just bizarre, isn't it? All this stuff that's going on. Hey, let me leave you another uh, scripture or two, and we're going to dig into, uh, like, what is the definition of, of bullying, really, truly, and how does it relate to our situation today, and what are the consequences of bullying? Plus, we're going to look at some of the underlying fundamental reasons why somebody would even be a bully, and you're going to be surprised at, at what comes out of this this morning. Psalm chapter 1 Verse one says, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord and on his law meditates day and night. He's like a tree planted by streams of water that yields its fruit in the season and its leaf does not wither. In all that he does, he prospers. The wicked are not so, but are like chaff that the wind drives away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. See, God ain't messing around here. He is not playing games. He, he is very succinctly saying, look, if, if you want to play that game, there are consequences. Psalm 34, what man is there who desires life and loves many days that he may see good? Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Turn away from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are toward the righteous and his ears toward their cry. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil to cut off the memory of them from the earth. See, there's huge consequences to be an evil. There's huge consequences. You know, uh, people in power, uh, they, you know, they get corrupted and they start taking advantage of everything for their own selfish visions. They become maniacal. We've seen that over the years. I'm not willing to sweep this under the carpet, folks. I'm not willing to just say, okay, we'll let these evil people do their thing, you know and run you know, away in fierce and scarcity. No, my heart, my mind is focused on love and abundance, but that is worth fighting for. That is worth standing up for. That, that alone, based on the precepts of God, should be our marching orders as the people of God to quit laying down, to quit backing off, and to move forward righteously by the standards and the precepts of the Lord Almighty. His word stands firm. It always has, it will, and forever will be. So let's take a look at one last little passage of scripture before I get into this, uh, a couple of points about bullies and who they are and, and, and how it affects us and what we can do about it. So Proverbs 22.10 says, Drive out a scoffer and strife will go out and quarreling and abuse will cease. And this, this word scoffer, if you take it to its, its larger uh, uh, meaning, I mean, do, do you think a bully is scoffing at you or whoever they are abusing? Absolutely. So you need to get rid of the scoffer. You need to get rid of the abuser. Yeah, the, the abuser can change, but that doesn't mean you let an abuser, a bully, stay in charge, period. So let's take a look at, at the definition. What is the definition of, of a bully or bullying? It's the use of strength. It's the use of power to force pressure, to actually coheres, to manipulate, to, to absolutely demand that others, by fear, right? They fearfully demand their, their will, uh, uh, and they impose it on others, persecuting or oppressing others by force or threat of force. In this case, we're seeing both, guys. And let me remind you of something. Bullies come in kind of two flavors, really. A whole bunch of variations on those themes, but, but there's, there's bullies that are just aggressive. They're in your face. They're going to march into your home. They're going to march into your country. They're going to march into your place, and they're going to take over at all costs. They don't care about you, your life, your possessions. They have no regard for that. They just are going to come in and take what they want. Think about what it takes to, to be that person. Think about that for a minute. We're talking about pure evil here, folks, because the definition of love is being ready, willing, and able to lay down your agenda, your life, 
All of that for the well-being of someone else. This is just the antithesis of that, completely the opposite end of the spectrum. There's another flavor here, and, and I'll, I'm going to just be straight up about it here. Listen, Vladimir Putin is absolutely aggressive. He is the guy who's in your face. He'll do whatever he wants to whomever he wants to get his way. And what he's done is he's seen weakness in our administration. So he's, he's seen weakness there, and that is passive-aggressive, folks. The weakness can be very almost undiscerning. And there's so many people out there right now, they're starting to wake up. They're going, wait a minute, we're getting taken for a ride here. Things aren't better. Uh, They're telling me this stuff. It doesn't make any sense. And they're imposing this stuff on me. And it's passive aggression based on the bullying flavor of door number two. I know some of you are saying, boy, Mike, you're off on the deep end here. That's fine. That's fine. I'm not asking you to agree with me. I'm putting some stuff out there and I'm seeing what's going on in the world. And I, 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 can't, I can't just stop by and let's see, see our country and our people and our faith go to hell in a handbasket. I can't do that. Can't do that. So let's take a look at a couple of things here because this definition of bullying is rampant. I hope you see what's going on here. And I'm using some, some real world, real time examples. But bullying or oppression, as it's commonly termed, right, oppression in the Bible is expressly forbidden. See, this isn't like, oh, it's okay sometimes, or, you know, we've got some world leaders that, uh, you know, we're going to give them a pass. No, God doesn't give you a pass when it comes to evil. And he certainly doesn't give you a pass when evil is perpetrated on widows and orphans and people that cannot defend themselves. So we're looking at scripture today. Leviticus 25, 17 says, Ye shall not therefore oppress one another. You shall not bully one another. You shall not hurt one another. You shall not kill one another. But thou shalt hear and fear thy God, for I am the Lord your God. That's the word of God, folks. You go look it up. Leviticus 25, 17, Proverbs 3, 30 says, strive not with a man without cause if he have done thee no harm. See, bullies don't care. They're going to come in and harm you no matter what because they don't really care about you. They don't care about life. They don't care about your position. They don't care how hard you've worked. They don't care about what you have or don't have. You're just in their way. Number two, bullying is totally ungodly. And what should be our example? Our example should be meekness. It should be humility. And I know I'm, I'm zooming through this this morning because I got a lot that I want to share with you here. But if you think about it, 2 Timothy chapter 2 says, And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient, in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves who are in opposition, right? If God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth, Now, I said this the other day, I still believe it, and I'll stand firm on it. All right, I think Vladimir Putin is is absolutely evil. I think he has committed war crimes and deserves to be held responsible for them. But I think there is a whole lot of other people that are in on this train of uh, oppression, of bullying, and it isn't, it isn't, it it isn't by uh, chance, okay? This is by design. And when, when you see this you're, and, you, and you, you wake up and, and you have a job to do, we have a job to do, to tell the truth and to stand firm in that truth, regardless of the consequences of, of, of our lives, what happens to us. See, if you're storing up a whole bunch of worldly stuff in your storehouse right now, I'm not saying that that isn't, is a bad thing. Everybody needs a, a roof over their head. They need, they need heat. They need electricity, running water. Hey, guess what? There's a lot of people throughout this world that don't have that. But for one circumstance or another, their country hasn't developed. Their leaders have held them down. We see now country, a country that's being destroyed and doesn't have electricity, water, things like that. What would imagine, it, what, imagine what would happen in this country if you woke up this morning and you didn't have internet? 
Whoa, uh, you had a roof over your head, hot water, you could take a shower, you had electricity, but you didn't have internet. You'd go absolutely bonkers. If you didn't have your cell phone that would work, you'd go crazy. See, you and I take way too much for granted, folks. We need to take stock of how blessed we are and wake up every day and just do that happy dance and go, thank you, God. Thank you, God. You're so good to me. You are so good to me. I've, I've, I've got some health. I, I can jump around. I, I can see, I can eat, I can smell, I can taste. And these are all pluses. I know a lot of people that, that don't have that and they got a smile on their face. And yet here you and I, we go through this world complaining about things well, and just let these, these idiots run the world, go crazy and perpetrate all their evil on folks that don't even have a chance. I know exactly what my mess is going to be for next week if I live this long, that long. Because <laughs> I, I can see it, it just gave it to me right there. Anyway, um, we'll come back to that next week. But bullying is ungodly. Meekness should be our example. See, like I'm fired up on, on this uh, encounter this morning. But I'll tell you what, when, when I walk out of this door, I'm not going to go getting in people's face. I'm going to see who I can love on. But I'm going to stand firm on my position, on my faith, and I'm going to always bring it back to the word of God. Is this the right thing or not? How can I join God in the work that he is doing and support righteousness, the right thing, the standards of God? See, let's go to Galatians chapter 5. If you look at the fruit of the Spirit, this is really a standard for our lives. Obviously, there's a lot of folks that don't live by this, and we're seeing them running amok right now on the world stage. But Galatians 5 says, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control, meekness, temperance, so-and-so. And, that, and that's, that's not exhaustive, but that's a pretty good start, isn't it? Imagine if we could just tune in on that and, and, and evaluate our behavior and how we treat people and how we approach God by the fruit of the Spirit. Ephesians 4.31 says, Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, and clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice, with all bullying, with all subterfuge, without lying. See, just moving forward. <clears throat> Hebrews 12, 14 says, follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. See, there is a standard here that God says, look, you are to be different. You are to go through this world with a, with a, a meek and humble heart. Just recognize, remember that God is, it has your back. He will see you through. He will see us through, but we've got to do it his way. See, now I'm going to dig down into some, some things. We've got some crazy leaders out here. We've got some people that just aren't right in the head. And, they're, and if your head and your heart aren't right, look out. That's not a leader worth following. And we got a bunch of them today. But bullies are motivated by pride, selfishness, and lack of love. That's what a bully is. They, they're, they're all full of themselves. They're full of pride. They're totally selfish, self-centered, and they totally lack love. See, Proverbs 13.10 tells us only by pride cometh contention. So you want trouble? It's coming with the prideful heart. 1 Corinthians 13.4 says, Charity or love suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself. Is not puffed up. Do not behave, it doesn't behave selfishly. It doesn't, it doesn't seek its own. It's not easily angered and it doesn't speak, think or speak evil. See, these are, these are the standards, but you see a bully, they're motivated by this pride factor and they want their way. It's total offense to, to God. Bullying is an offense to the Lord. Psalm 73 clearly states that they, the bullies, are corrupt and speak wickedly concerning oppression. They speak loftily. They set their mouth against the heavens and their tongue walketh through the earth. Do you see this illustration? It's like a monster, right? A bully monster. And they say, how doth God know? See, they're so prideful. 
And is there knowledge in the most high as a dream when one awaketh? So, O Lord, when thou awakest, thou shalt despise their image. See, we, we see leaders that are totally unqualified that quote scripture, that get up and talk about how God is on their side and this and that and the other thing. And this is a godly thing. Tell you what, there is nothing godly about going out, oppressing people, uh, penalizing them for, for their hard work, all right, just, just uh, cutting them off at the knees for being productive. And there certainly is no excuse. There is nothing on this earth that will condone somebody else taking the life of someone else like, is what, like what's going on right now in the Ukraine. There's, there's no excuse for it. See, check this out though. As angry as we are, as infuriating as this is, as heinous as these crimes are, a bully's victory is short-lived. I, I, I don't care what happens in, in our time frame, okay? Our time frame is not God's time frame. His ways are not our ways. There is a purpose in all of this, and we need to see it. We need to be aware and look for it and just uh, seek God's will. Be praying for peace, right? But when you look around you, you've got to be practical at the same time. God never says, check your head in at the door, okay? He says, no, think this out. A wise person knows what's going on in the world. A wise person will check it out and act accordingly. But a, a, a bully's victory is, is just that. It's a bully's victory, and bully's victories are cut short. Job 20 says, knowest thou not this of old since man was placed upon earth that the triumphing of the wicked is short and the joy of the hypocrite, but for a moment, just for a little while, those who do evil are coming, they're gonna hit a brick wall. They're coming to an end. Sooner or later, bullies will reap what they sow. Proverbs eleven seventeen: the merciful man doeth good to his own soul, but that is cruel, troubleth his own flesh. See, people that are cruel, they don't realize it, but they're hurting themselves. Not just now, but for all eternity. It's crazy. Jeremiah 17, 10 says, I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the, the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. See, uh, 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 sooner or later, bullies are going to reap exactly what they sow. Galatians 6, 7 says, don't be deceived. God is not mocked. For whosoever a man soweth, whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. See, when, when you get in and you start trusting God's word and applying it, all of a sudden life gets pretty cool, doesn't it? Because no matter what happens... See, like, I'm just standing up here trying to share the truth the best I possibly can with you. If I get arrested or killed over this, hallelujah. All right, that, that, does, not, that does not bother me. It does not scare me. What scares me is if I don't do what God has asked me to do. If I don't step into his will and share the truth of his word, I'm the, I'm the big loser. All right, when I step in and into God's presence, he can say, well, let's sit down and talk about this, Mike. You, you were given a lot of responsibility here. What did you do with it? See, consider for a second here, how would it make you feel if you were bullied by others? Maybe you have been. I mean, I am just telling you here on this broadcast that you're being bullied right now. Do you realize it or do you not? See, there's a lot of people that voted for this administration who are, are realizing, wait a minute, we just got sucker punched. We're bullied into a situation and they've got, uh, let's call it buyer's remorse, okay? But there's things that you and I can do because remember now, <laughs> our faith and our circumstances and our ultimate goals isn't based on any politics or politician, world circumstances, economies, up or down, sideways, inside or out. Our faith is in God. Our faith is in Christ. And when you've been redeemed, when you've been set free, all right, you can absolutely stare death in the face 
and you will not falter. See, that's what we're actually doing right now. We're looking at the world and it's barreling down with these lion-like teeth. And it wants to scare you because that's a tactic. That is a total tactic. See, join the Lord's side. Go to the aid of the underdog. Get your eyes off of yourself. Figure out how you can, you know, add value to the less fortunate, to these people that, that are... Uh, that are, be, are basically being t- thrown under the bus or, or tossed to the wolves. See, what can you do? What can I do? We, we can, first of all, put our faith or hope in God and begin to pray like we've never prayed before. Fast, fast and, and pray and just ask God for his, for his will in our lives and to bring the body of Christ together to stand firm on the rock-solid precepts of Jesus Christ. Psalm 82, verse 3 says, Defend the poor and the fatherless. Do justice to the afflicted and to the needy. I hope you take that to heart. See, check this out. The bully is asking for trouble because the Lord is watching and sides with the oppressed. He always does. He always will. See, in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 12 says, For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayers, but the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. See that? God, God has our back. Might not seem like it. Sometimes it might be more difficult than what we think we can handle. But remember, you woke up this morning. You had running water. You could turn it on. It could be hot. It could be cold. You had clean clothes. You had a bed to sleep in. You had a roof over your head. Probably had a car to drive. You probably, you, you had so many blessings that maybe you forgot about. When things get tough, you start looking back and going, wow, I appreciate all that stuff that much more. Here's a couple of examples out of scripture of some people that uh, endured and actually triumphed uh, it, through some very heavily um, oppressed circumstances. The bullies bared down, like Daniel, his story of bullying in the Bible, his family, his, his brothers, you know, the whole thing. And, and how uh, Daniel rose to the occasion to the extent where all of his trials, all of his tribulations, all of the oppression, all the bullying finally culminated as he trusted God into Daniel chapter 5 says, Then this Daniel became distinguished above all the other high officials and satraps because an excellent spirit was in him and the king planned to set him over the whole kingdom. Then the high officials and the satraps sought to find a ground of complaint against Daniel with regard to the kingdom, but they could not find any ground for complaint or any fault in him because he was faithful and no heir of fault was found in him. See, when you stand firm and you trust God, God is going to see you through. <laughs> that story is so, uh, so amazing. I absolutely love it. See, bullies are focused on their own power. All the other officials that were trying to get Daniel and, and, and get him killed and get him out of the way, uh, they just had issues. They had personal issues. They probably had mommy issues and daddy issues and life issues. They, they were just psychophants, and they had, they had no business being in those positions in the first place. But the other officials wanted to use their positions for their own power and influence. See, that's what they wanted to do. But Daniel's focus was on serving the king and the kingdom. You have to put God first. I don't care if you're Republican, Democrat, Libertarian, Independent. It does, that doesn't matter. We're not talking about that. We're talking about being true and loyal to the one true living God and standing firm on his precepts. You take a look at Esther, her story, where her, her people, this was a, uh, an example of anti-Semitism, and, and uh, th- th- there, there was a guy just going up against her, one of the whole people group wiped out, and, but Esther was, had some favor with the king, and th- this story is absolutely incredible. You know, when, you, when you look at, at Esther chapter 7, you can go back and read it. It says, so the king and Haman went to, uh, to uh, Queen Esther's banquet. She held a banquet, and this guy Haman was the, 
perpetrator. He wanted to wipe her and her people out and do some subterfuge and get the king to, to, to extinguish her and, and her people. But anyway, so, so the king and Haman went to Queen Esther's banquet. And as uh, they were drinking wine on the second day, the king again asked, Queen Esther, what is your petition? See, she, he asked her, he says, look, whatever you want. I, I, it will be given to you. What's your request? Even up to half the kingdom, it will be granted. He must have been feeling pretty good that night. Then Queen Esther answered, if I have found favor with you, your majesty, and if it pleases you, grant me my life. He must have went, what's, what's this all about? This is my petition and spare my people. This is my request. The story goes on and, you know, she she was just so, she had prayed, she had fasted, she had sought God's will, and he had given her the, the, um, the discernment to host a banquet, invite the king where she could have audience, and, and in his busy schedule, in his preoccupation, he would listen to her, and as it was, Haman, who was the bully, uh, he got his recompense the very next day, so um, there are so many stories like this throughout scripture, but I want to conclude and leave you with, with this one last thought this morning. And that is the story of Jesus and the bullies that wanted to do him in. See, Jesus was kind. Jesus is compassionate and he's holy. And he truly, truly loved to serve others because his character was one that attracted people to him. But because of the jealousy and everything else, he also attracted these bullies. And these bullies would follow him around. They'd look for opportunities to, to take a jab, to try to trip him up. They wanted to find him doing something wrong. Does this sound kind of familiar, like Daniel maybe? They would interrupt his teaching, ask questions designed to try to, you know, uh, get him in trouble. All right. And whenever he did something wonderful, whenever he was out doing his miraculous uh, interventions, like healing somebody, all of these, these good things, they'd complain uh, that he broke some kind of a law, <laughs> that you can't heal on the Sabbath, you can't do this. I mean, you see, like oftentimes uh, uh, bullies are really into this, uh, this rulemaking. They're very anal about trying to find some kind of a loophole to trip people up and get them in trouble. So see, it was, it, it, and because it was on the Sabbath day and the law said, well, you know what? Uh, you should take a day of rest and not do any work. Uh, they considered that work and in their eyes, um, Jesus just couldn't do anything right. See, let me ask you this. Do you think there's um, uh, a any day that should be designated as a day that um, is taboo to do good, to, to do right to someone? I don't think so. How about you? What do you think? I think we should be a people who just simply wander around and do good as much as we possibly can. But see, arguing with a bully, that, that never works. Trying to get them on your side or convince them that, uh, that, that you're not who they think think you are, and that very rarely ever works, if ever. Okay, Bullies are often so consumed in their own world and their own hate that they just don't see any sense in reasoning. In fact, they have no reason. Let me make a side note here, too. You've got to remember something. Bullies oftentimes are bullies because they've been bullied. People that are evil oftentimes are evil because evil has been perpetrated upon them. So when you look at someone like, I'm going to take like Vladimir Putin right now. He's an evil man. It's taken him a long time to surface as a serial killer. But he, that is who he is. He's a psychopath. He's a serial killer. And when you dig into his past, I'll guarantee you that he is angry beyond anger. He has exploded uh, like the devil himself. And in his past, he is so hurt. He is so angry. And you know, he comes off as a big macho, this and that and the other thing. But he's just a snibbling, little, scared person underneath all of that. Doesn't mean that he shouldn't have consequences be held in the world court for world 
for, for war crimes and many other things. I personally doubt that he's going to see that day. <laughs> you know what? Who knows? It's all in God's hands. But there's issues with bullies, right? They've got problems. And when it festers and it goes unchecked and un, uncontrolled and unaccountable, you either get door number two, the angry psychopath unleashing their, their crazy on the world, or you get the, the subtle, you know, uh, on the other side, it's just, just kind of passive aggressive, but underneath there's as seething as the maniac. There's two different flavors, same kind of activities, circumstances, and the results. Not good, not good. So, you know, how do you, how do you address this stuff? You know, you gotta focus on creating some boundaries for yourself between you and them. And on a practical daily basis, that, that, that will work. It really will. Focus on building up your spirit and your confidence. Don't be bullied. Focus on building yourself up. Be strong in the word of God. If you're not in a Bible study now, get one going. If you get into one, lead one, join one, doesn't have to be fancy. It can be on Zoom. It can be in your home. It can be, and you want to do a Bible study here. We got a, we got a church. You can come down and, and do a Bible study here. But get into the word of God. Share it, know it, eat it, sleep it. Be able to share with others even the simple joy that you have in the Lord because that's your strength right there. See, Jesus didn't allow any of these bullies to deter him from his mission. He knew exactly what he was to do, that he was here to serve others and to spread the gospel message, all right? Uh, he was smart. He was strategic. He didn't give up. So you and I, there's a great message there. Just keep persevering despite the bullies in your life. Keep it up. Don't give up. See, Jesus' bullies conspired to have him arrested. They wanted to see him dead. They wanted to see him killed, okay? <laughs> and his bullies thought that they had won, right? When they're, through all the illegal trials, we're going to go through that at Easter time, but through all of this stuff, they thought that they had won. <laughs> oh, boy. Yet you and I know that three days later, three days later, Jesus triumphed over the grave. Jesus rose, and guess what? Normal isn't coming back, but Jesus is. Are you prepared? Are you ready? Are you totally ready? Yeah, I mean, you know, it's a day-to-day -day thing. It's a daily deal. Uh, you, you know, nobody just kind of gets saved and you're okay for, you know. You, you, this, is, this is something you've got to pick up your cross and carry it daily. This is a crazy mixed up world. And, it, and it's hard, but if you care more about receiving the accolades from people in the world than you do about hearing God saying, well done, good and faithful servant, you're gonna live a kind of a sad sack, sorry life. So in the end, God wins. You and I know that. In the end, bullies do not have the last say because God's truth, God's truth and his justice will prevail. God wins out. So uh, if you've been bullied, Jesus knows exactly what you're going through. If, you, if you're listening to this today and you all of a sudden realize, man, I am getting bullied, but I hadn't even realized it. Maybe you're like the frog in the water, jump out of the pot, get, get on hopping down the road with, a, with, the, with the truth and share it with others. See, God knows the loneliness. He knows the isolation. He knows the pain. Jesus knows the struggle that you've gone through, that perhaps you're going through right now, or that you will be faced with in the future. You can pray to him for guidance and protection, and he's got your back. God wins out. God wins out. So I'm going to leave you with this thought here this morning. God bless you. But it, I, I believe it's so apropos. I think it's totally vital that, that you and I uh, go through this uh, coming week and months ahead, the rest of this year, the rest of our lives, however long or short that might be, all right, understanding that as Christians, we have a responsibility to stand up for the weak and the oppressed. Amen to that? How can we do that? How can we stand up for the weak and oppressed? We join God in the work that he's doing. 
And with his people, you and I at work as a body, loving God and loving people, let him work in and through us and it'll be okay. When we see others being bullied, we need to stand up for them and get them help. This is a powerful message, folks. If you're listening to this today, don't just walk away. Don't just walk away. You, got, you can't walk away from listening to this w- without taking some responsibility. When we're being bullied, we have a responsibility to serve others by standing up to the bully. We stand up to the bully in whatever way is possible for us. Let people know you've had enough of it. I don't care. Write letters. Make phone calls. Tell your neighbors. Whatever it is we can do. When you see it going on in the world, man, that's, that's what you do. You don't, just, you, you, you don't take 20 years to write some bill or, or come up with some sort of a, a new mandate or whatever. You take personal responsibility. You do something about it individually and collectively. That's how God works. He works through his body right? We stand up to bullying not only for our own sake, but for, the, for others, those, those who are uh, also being bullied, those who are less fortunate, the orphan, the widow, the children, the women. Well, I don't care if they're here or, or they're at our borders, they're, they're in another country, okay? You got to stand firm. Now, I'm going to speak to parents just a second, and we're going to close this out. Parents, we, we, we know that Daniel and Esther were bullied because of anti-Semitism. We know that. Conversations about bullying because of race and ethnicity, they, they can be totally awkward, all right? So you got ethnicity, you got uh, some sort of anti-Semitism, you got things going on that need to have good, healthy conversations, Right? Because these things, these things need to be discussed. In the dark shadow of the Holocaust, we know how quickly hate can grow. We can't let this happen, folks. Whether it's here, there, or anywhere in this world, that has to stop. We need to have good, healthy conversations about what's happening in the world. We need to explain what it truly means to be a follower of Christ. Folks, you can lead your children. You can lead your family by example to Christ. All, everything points to Jesus. Like my son used to ask, dad, does everything have to be about Jesus? And, you know, my response was, mm, everything doesn't have to, but it does. <laughs> and for the, for the world, man, the, the, the world is in for a rude awakening, guys. You know, don't be scared but stand up for the right thing. Don't worry about the consequences. Do the right thing. Because here's what's at stake. I'm going to pray that our children are the guardians on the wall who keep watch and stand up against hatred, against bullying, against the, uh, the evils of this world. You see it going on all around you. You know what's taking place. Just remember, all right, normal isn't coming back, but Jesus is. Let's pray. Lord, I want to thank you for this morning. Uh, I I hope that I wasn't too much in everybody's face this morning. But God, I, I just see what's happening in this world, and I'm fired up that your people can't just stand by and and let and let everything just fall, fall apart, fall to pieces. That you're calling us to trust you, God. And in that trust, if we just stand firm, you'll, you'll teach us, you'll show us exactly what it is that you have for each and every one of us, individually and collectively, as we desire. Lord, we, we are desperately desiring to join you in your work. We want your wisdom. We want your understanding, Lord. We want to be... Uh, led by your Holy Spirit. Fill us. Fill your your people. Fill out your church, God, with a fresh wind of the power of your Holy Spirit. Jesus, I love you, and I pray that anybody who uh, listens to these broadcasts or hears the sound of my voice, God, that it wouldn't be my voice they hear, but they'd hear the invitation of you, that your invitation would simply be, trust me, And if there's anybody here right now who has not received you, that they can understand that your word says very clearly that when we believe in our hearts, 
that God raised you from the dead, Jesus, and we profess you as Lord and Savior, that we shall be saved. That only happens with an encounter between a person and the Almighty God. By the power of the Holy Spirit this morning, Lord, I pray that you'd fall fresh, you'd sustain us and keep us, give us a fresh wind for the week, and that we'd recognize that our plumb line is based on the fact that this world is crazy and normal isn't coming back, but you are. We praise you and thank you in Jesus' precious name. Amen and amen. Um, I just want to say that uh, it's a privilege, it's an absolute privilege to be able to be with you all on a Sunday morning or any day. Look forward to seeing you again soon. We're gonna have a uh, launching Easter service right here, 935 West 2nd Street, downtown Benicia on Easter, April 17th. And that's gonna be at uh, 9.55 a.m. in the morning, just like these broadcasts right here, 9.55 on Sunday mornings. And... Uh, Yesterday's gone. Tomorrow's not here. We have today. We have the present. We have the very present right here. Normal's never going to return, but Jesus will. It's only by his amazing grace. Who breaks the power sin and darkness whose love is mighty and so much stronger the king of glory the king above all kings who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder who makes breathless in awe and wonder the king of glory the king above all kings this is amazing grace This is unfailing love That you would take my place That you would bear my cross You laid down your life That I would be set free Oh Jesus I sing for that you've done for me Worthy is the Lamb who was slain Worthy is the King who conquered the grave Worthy is the Lamb who was slain Worthy is the King who conquered the grave Worthy is the Lamb who was slain Worthy is the king who conquered the grave. Worthy is the lamb who was slain. Worthy, worthy. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. You laid down your life. That I would be set free. Oh, Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. You lay it down. I sing for all that you've done for me. Yes, I do. Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. God bless you all. Um, I know this has probably been long. I don't, I don't really time these things. It's just kind of gather together and go for it. So I hope that your week is filled with the love and the hope and the peace of, of God.
May the love of the Lord, may the faith, the absolute trust and the strength that we have in Jesus Christ, powered by the joy of the Holy Spirit, be ours now and forevermore. Uh, God bless you. Have an amazing day.